Hello, I'm Mike Matre, and I'm the host of Healthcare Matters, where the legal and medical fields come together to discuss healthcare matters. Today's guest is Tad Dudlin. He is a partner at Kaufman Dolowich Volick. Welcome to Healthcare Matters. Thanks, Mike. Pleasure to be here with you. HIPAA data breaches are emerging as one of the largest systemic risks a hospital or a large group faces in the mo modern healthcare delivery system. What risk management advice would you give physician clients for maintaining HIPAA confidentiality within their EMR system? Yeah, that's an excellent point. And I'll, I'll just tell you that I had a case come across my desk where it was uh, a hybrid. It was uh, an internal breach, uh, at a ho an alleged internal breach at a, at a hospital uh, for one of their employees who came in as a patient. Um, uh, under that scenario, in that fact pattern, the, the, the patient slash employee had checked a confidentiality box on a form, and when that form got entered into the system, uh, there was a disconnect internally, and uh, the circumstances of the employee slash patient's visit to the hospital were disclosed, and then it was around another very sensitive private information about his medical history, what all of a sudden became water cooler fodder. Uh, if that is a, uh, which was relayed to him, of course, uh, via a text message from another colleague. So, right, it's an electronic uh, game of post office. And so to avoid that and avoid allegations of a systemic breach or of a, an anthem uh, you know, class size breach, I think it's incumbent to have um, external, internal, and practical safeguards. So uh, in reverse order, a practical safeguard would be uh, an isolated, dedicated electronic database entry area. So not a cube, but an actual office with a door. And on top of that, you've got um, uh, a well, to use a, crude, a chain of custody for those who enter into the system, both manually uh, through the old fashioned, uh, I've checked the kitchen area and I was the last person in here, uh, and on the com computer digital footprint, if you will. So it's an assigned login. And then you could also have privacy screens on the face of the monitor, which I've seen on airplanes. Uh, they're pretty useful to prevent uh, uh, an onlooker uh, from happening upon some information that they're not, they shouldn't see. Mm -hmm. uh, and folks are generally curious. Uh, even if a screen is left open, uh, they will look uh, just by nature and see what it is. And that there, the minute it's, uh, the toothpaste is out of the tube, so to speak, it's hard to put it back. Um, so then other internal safeguards can be with respect to uh, only dedicated personnel are entitled to use it. They have uh, uh, the, the most sufficient encryption method they can have. They have secure access points uh, and, and externally to keep out uh, potential exposure to outside leaks. Uh, that requires ensuring that your cyber program is up to snuff and that your ID, IT department, uh, the dedicated resources are there. Uh, even though that may not be um, uh, a desired spot of the budget, uh, doing that work on the front end to prevent some uh, opportunistic folks uh, externally to access data and then try to sell that on a, on a secondary market uh, is, is money well spent, in my opinion. Well, thank you, Tad, for joining us on Healthcare Matters, where the medical and legal communities come together to discuss healthcare matters. Uh, I hope to talk to you again soon. Great. Thanks a lot, Mike. One of the legal uh, arguments being advanced in regard to medical malpractice and the Affordable Care Act centers on the collateral source rule and whether a defendant physician could, instead of paying for a lifetime of medical care, for an injured patient, he or she could pay for 